Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Anna Fernandez, an attorney in Miami, Florida, and I'm going to continue with the videos uh, regarding the changes in the law in family, particularly. Uh, we spoke about the new changes in alimony, and in this video, we're going to briefly discuss some of the other changes that occurred, but having to do with time-sharing schedules. So let's say you were in a divorce or you had a paternity action, and as you know, any case involving minor children, there has to be some sort of plan, a time sharing schedule, how the parents are gonna take care of the kid, who's gonna pay for certain things, um, certain expenses, when the kid is gonna be uh, with mom in the holidays, when he's gonna be with dad and that sort of thing. All of this stuff needs to be resolved before a case technically can be closed. Um, and that's, generally speaking, this is called the parenting plan. So let's say now, you know, you have a child, you have 18 years, right? So let's say now when you enter into the time-sharing plan, um, the child was three, okay? So a few years later, a few years pass, and you realize that it's not really working out. So you take it back to court, you reopen the case, and this is all, pro it's typical procedure, and that has not changed. You still need to reopen the case and request for a modification. But what has changed now is the requirements for being able to, to have the court rule on a change that has occurred and actually change the agreement. So using the same example, a few years pass, prior to July 1st of this year, of 2023, in order for you to modify the, ch the schedule that you had at the time that the child was three for purposes of this example, you would have to show the court that there is a substantial change in the circumstance that was unanticipated at the time that you and the other parent entered into the agreement. So what the new law says is that you can now modify an agreement and you no longer have to show the court that the change that, that occurred is was unanticipated at the time that the agreement was entered into. So let's use the same example um, where the child was three, there's an agreement that was entered into, and let's say for this uh, hypothetical, let's say that the dad is either a pilot, let's say he's a truck driver, or someone who has a profession that doesn't really have a set schedule. Let's say they're, they're here in Miami for a week and then they have to leave uh, for another week. So having a time-sharing schedule in place at that time may not have been something that, let's say, would have been, I guess, easy like to say, okay, one week mom, one week dad. So for purposes of establishing a parenting plan, the parents decided, okay, we'll do this. What, every time you get a your schedule, what we'll do is we'll we'll formulate the time sharing schedule as it comes in. So let's say you get your your work schedule and you're supposed to be out of the state, county, or country um, on these two weeks. Then those two weeks you'll be with mom and dad will take them the other weeks. So let's say for purposes of this hypothetical, you enter into an agreement already knowing this, and in the agreement you wrote in we will determine the time sharing schedule whenever dad gets his or you know within x amount of days after dad receives his schedule for work well now you want to modify it because you know what this is just not working out it's it's very unstable the child it's not giving the child a consistent schedule it's at the end of the day it's not in the best interest of the child prior to july 1st and speaking from experience and through practice i have done cases like this where mom and dad enter into an agreement. They knew that dad's schedule was subject to change on a monthly basis, but in any case, they, they included a provision that stated that we will figure out which days the child is gonna be with mom and, and dad um, within X amount of time from when dad receives the schedule. Well, prior to July 1st, if you want to change the schedule, you have to show that that change that the change that's happened that it's just it's not working out was unanticipated. But in the agreement itself, it clearly states that we know that that schedule, you know, we don't have that schedule until X amount of time or we get a schedule once a month type thing. So that that circumstance was technically it was already anticipated. So before the court could even listen to your case and so look he's the child is doing bad in school the child is unstable like there's many things that you could show the court that it's it's very clear that 
it's in the best, best interest of the child, before you could even get there, you have to overcome what's called a motion to dismiss. And in practice, being faced with these type of challenges, I have been on the other side where they want to change the circuit, they want to change the agreement to say, look, the whole choosing the schedule a month before uh, we actually uh, implement it is is unstable. I've I've had it dismissed because I've shown this was anticipated. It's clearly written in the agreement. So that has now changed. Now you don't have to show that it was unanticipated. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because you you won't be able to get to the actual um, child's best interests, the actual factors, if you're overcome or if you can't overcome a motion to dismiss. And the way that the law was written and having to show and prove that there's an unanticipated change would make that very difficult. And at the end of the day, what we want is in the best interest of the kids and whatever obstacle that, that, that comes in that way, we should remove it. So I do believe that this is a great uh, thing, that a great modification. And there are going to be several other ones. I will definitely touch upon them in the next videos. This is a little bit more simple. It's more of a procedural thing on a, a the lawyer, on an attorney standpoint. But at the end of the day, if you're a parent that, let's say, you've tried to do this before, but you were unsuccessful because the whatever change you had to prove was supposed to be unanticipated because this was before July 1st, um, now you know that you can actually change it. You don't have to prove that it was unanticipated. You just have to prove that it was a change in the circumstances and that it is in the best interest of the, of the kids to have the, this change in or modification in the time sharing schedule. So if you have any questions or if you want to know more about this change, please let me know so we can create more content like this uh, to help better, better serve you and the community. I will see you in the next video.